And good evening and welcome in to Concordia Moorhead. I am Jason Groth with Lance Rock as we get ready to bring you Section 8 to a semifinal action here live from Concordia College. It's the Perm Yellow Jackets getting ready to take on the Barnesville Trojans in the Section 8 2A semifinals. And Lance, it definitely should be a good one here tonight. Yeah, this is one of those matchups you probably circle. Maybe people thought it would happen in the championship at, at some point. But again, two great games and probably two of the five games that uh, the Yellow Jackets were pushed to their limits and then ultimately defeated by the Barnesville Trojans twice. So, you, you know, there's, there's two sides of this story. Barnesville's looking to continue to roll and do the things that they've done. And uh, Yellow Jackets are trying to right the ship of two of the losses, not many on the season, and trying to figure out how to defeat this Trojan team that has uh, been kind of a thorn in their side all season long. We'd like to thank the booster clubs of both Barnesville and Perm for their support of tonight's broadcast and making this possible for tonight. And we'll take a quick glance at how we got here in this Section 8 2A. We gotta give a proper thank to the Twitter account that is Vic the Vike. They did a great job of this graphic and that's where I found it and I may have commandeered it from them but it seems to work and that's how we got here tonight. Two semifinal games. The first one is the one that's on display. It's the Yellow Jackets and the Trojans. Yeah this is going to be a good game and if you look coming through the Barnesville Trojans had to play a bye for two teams in this uh, section and that was the number one seed from Yellow Jackets number two seed Pelican Rapids Vikings. Barnesville had to come through uh, and uh, play two teams they opened up with Crookston with that game Abby John uh, poured in 30 points to lead the, Troj uh, the Trojans uh, 71 45 victory over the Pirates uh, then they they've advanced on to play East Grand Forks and that one kind of surprised me not that Barnesville was the the victor but East Grand Forks played a lot of teams tough including the Yellow Jackets this year Barnesville kind of walked away with that one 80 to 62 uh, played really, really well, and now here at Concordia, I don't know if that one surprised you at all, Jason, or not, but the the spread kind of is what, what surprised me. And now you look at this, these two teams, it should be an exciting one when they play. It's always been a unique rivalry. Earlier in the year, Barnesville swept the regular season, but in the two games, it was two different styles of play. Exactly, and the first one, uh, just kind of crazy to think all this this happened it was back in December so we're going back to last year and again that loss dropped the the Yellow Jackets to five and two was their first Heart of the Lakes conference loss since the 2021 season and uh, Theo led the way 25 and 14 but it was one of those that was a struggle she the first half I think she had four or six points and and really a good defensive game put together by the uh, by the Trojans and uh, ultimately, in the end, uh, the Barnesville came, not came back, but they was, withstood a run by the Yellow Jackets and then finished it off at the end. And it should be interesting to see those matchups. We've talked about it throughout the day with each other. Now we have a chance to talk about it on air. It's going to be interesting to see what some of those keys are. And as we play out in this pregame show, the Yellow Jackets, you know, it's a little feel but you're going to need to find some secondary scoring. Right. So, you, you know, you go back and you look at the two different games and you go back to December. Uh, Willow had 25. Kaya Anderson had 17. Cora Grismer, 15. Riley Mickelson, 9. I think that's the type of output if you're TJ Super and his staff you're looking for tonight is a little bit more balance uh, spreading that floor a little bit, and then maybe that allows Willow to have a little bit, Willow Theo, a little bit more room underneath. In the second game, uh, Theo led with 26 and 19, Grisman 19, Pilgrim with nine. So the capabilities there for the Yellow Jackets for sure, but we haven't seen it quite so much in the last couple games, Jason, and I think that may be one of those things that you look at as an early key to the game are the Yellow Jackets able to move the ball and our secondary scorers coming into play? On the other side, Abby John has been outstanding for much of the year for Barnesville. 
and you're going to expect another big game from her if the Trojans are to have success tonight. Right, 30 in the opening round of playoffs, 26 in the in the second round, followed up by Ava Folingstead with 25. So again, they had 51 out of two two ladies in that one. And and if you look back in the game, she was kind of the straw that stirred the drink to start. Uh, that game and she had 23 points in the game got into some foul trouble in the first one and had to sit for some time uh, in the second game she had 23 again so you know that 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 she's going to be the one and she's going to be it Willow Thiel and Abby John are going to go back and forth with their points and they may end up canceling each other out that's where you're looking at, is it going to be a Folingstead? Is it going to be a Gray? Is it going to be a Pilgrim? Is it going to be a, a Grismer or an Anderson? Who's that next name that we say after Abby John and Willow Thiel tonight, Jason, that I think is really this key to this matchup? I think one of the keys that you also mentioned tonight for, I think more so it goes for head coach CJ Super, head coach Ryan Bomstad is expect the unexpected tonight. You never know what's going to happen in this type of stage you can usually count on your big players, but there's always one that kind of becomes that march hero. Who's it going to be, and you got to, and how are you going to defend on the other side if who it's going to be? Right, and and you know there's lots of things happening here. Bigger floor, obviously bigger arena. Uh, there's it, it's crazy how the stands looking across here. And again, I think expect the unexpected, but stick what got you here. You have to be able to do the things you do well. If you're hanging your hat on defense, then you better come and lock out on defense. If you're hanging your hat on you're going to be a transition team, well, you better keep being a transition team. It's kind of late in the game to make some changes. So stick with what you got, got here and ultimately execute the small things. Find the loose balls. Hit your free throws. Make your inbounds play plays successful and you're scoring off of those. And those are the little keys to this game. It's almost the game within the game, so to speak. And I think if you're both coaches, those are the things that keep you up at night. Can you control those things? Now we'll take a look at our starting lineups. The visitors on the scoreboard tonight are the Barnesville Trojans. They come in with a record of 18 and 10. They were seven and five in the heart of the lakes. And an impressive 13 and five overall against section eight two A opponents. However, they struggled towards the end of the year, dropping a pair to two section opponents when they were defeated by Holly and Thief River Falls, but since then have righted the ship with those wins over Crookston and East Grand Forks. They will start like this, starting at a guard, a five foot four inch senior, number two, Kennedy Gray. Starting at a guard, a five foot three inch junior, number four, Sophie Frederick. Starting at a guard, a five foot eight inch junior, number 23, Abby John. Starting at forward, a five foot eight inch junior, number 24, Lexi Haft. And starting at a forward, a five foot eight inch junior, number 30, Ava Fallingstead. Head coach, of the Trojans, Ryan Bumstead, he assists by Ali Honrud, Ali Honrud, Emma Nielsen, and Peyton Boom. For the Yellow Jackets, with a record of 24 and 3, co champions are the Heart of the Lakes champions with a 10 and 2 record. 14 and 2 overall against Section 8 2A opponents. They're 0 and 1 on a neutral court. Barnesville's 1 and 0 on a neutral court. The Yellow Jackets will start like this at a guard, a 5 foot 4 inch junior, number 2, Cora Grismer. Starting at a forward, a 5 foot 10 inch sophomore, number 5, Kaya Anderson. Starting at a four to five foot eight inch senior, number 13, Kennedy Pilgrim. Starting at a four to six foot senior, number 21, Willow Thiel. And at a guard, a five foot three inch senior, Riley Mickelson. Head coach is TJ Super. He's assisted by Robbie Cox and Michelle Borman. And you hear familiar names there, which leads to the question is the matchups, how are they going to match up? How's Barnesville going to slow down and try to slow down Willow Thiel? How are the Yellow Jacks going to try to slow down Abby John and see what they can do against Sir? Big players have big games in these type of nights, and it's setting up to be one of those nights. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, you want games with star power. And when you're at this part of the, the section tournament, you're ultimately hoping that you get to see that, and, and you are going to tonight with a, a couple, let's just call it spade to spade, two of the best players in Section 8 AA. And there's others you throw into that list, but you, you don't have to look much further than Willow Thiel and Abby John to go, uh, man, they're, they're, they're star power. Willow already uh, signed uh, going, going up north to Crookston. Abby John to Moorhead State, and she's just a junior. So, again, she's got time to come back here and uh, and uh, 
give one more run at this, but again, two great players. But again, Jason, you've said it so well, man, it, 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 it's, it just builds up to me like it's going to be more than just those two. And what I think's made the difference probably a little bit, Barnesville's had kind of the best of the, the two worlds here. They got some really good shooting in that first game. Um, you know, I think to that second half where Sophie Frederick, I think she came out and hit three or four, four three-pointers right away and uh, just kind of took the Yellow Jackets off guard. So it's going to be those sorts of things, and we certainly don't want to see foul trouble, but it could rear its ugly head, especially if uh, playing on a bigger floor, more spacing, more chance to get those hand check fouls and the cuts through the lane. So, man, the sky's the limit in this game, and I, I think we're in for a good one. And uh, I, I don't know. I think the team, obviously, it's an easy thing said, but... The team that shoots the ball well right away might be the one who who uh, ultimately is the victorious because of this is a wide open gym to shoot in and uh, the ends are really long and sometimes that takes shooters a while to get used to. We'll take a quick breather, come back, we'll have your introductions and more coming up from Memorial Auditorium here at the campus of Concordia Moorhead. We thank you for tuning in today here on Yellow Jacket Activities. We hope you're enjoying the pregame show. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Well, welcome back inside Memorial Auditorium here at Concordia College, home of the Cobbers. I'm Jason Groth with Lance Rock as we get ready to go for the Section 8 2A semifinal. First one of two. Two exciting games tonight. First one will be live here on Jacket Activities YouTube. We thank you for tuning in to this production by 549 Media. And on the other side, we also like to give a shout out. And if you want to watch game number two, it's on your live event. Check that out on YouTube also at yourliveevent.com. It's Pelican Rapids taking on Holly, and the Vikings coming off a thrilling overtime victory that kind of stunned a lot of people that it went to overtime, and then the way it went on the big shot by Korf, 
And then it goes to, after that, Falcon Rapids is able to outlast Frazee and pick up the victory. They'll take on Holly, who's been surging and playing some great basketball of late. Yeah, and when we, when if you drew up your brackets, I, I don't know that Holly was going to be in your mix, but I, you never count them out. They just, they always are ready at tournament time. They always play really well. I knew East Grand Forks brought a good team. I knew Monaga had a really, really great season. And then these two teams as well. And boy, it's just setting up for a really nice uh, evening of basketball here as the uh, arena's uh, filling up and, and we're getting ready for the anthem and starting lineups. And, and I can only imagine there are some nerves down there, Jason, as you uh, maybe step on this floor for the first time and it's historic value and, and all the players who have played here. And I remember coming in here in the early 80s and this thing, they would turn people away because the fire marshal, they couldn't get it in when it was District 24 and, and Region 6A. So it brings back some memories for me as well as we're, as we're getting ready for basketball. Should be a fun one, one unique thing. The Yellow Jackets haven't played a game here on Concordia this year. They practice. Barnesville does have a game on this floor, and that was a nail biter for the Trojans earlier this year. Right, and I think it just it's just you need to get used to this length, and we'll get ready for the anthem here. And it'll be played by under the direction of Mr. Matt Lamb and the Perm Pet Band. Great job once again by the Perm Pep Band in the direction of Mr. Matt Lamb with their national anthem. So now we'll have the starting lineups as they'll be announced alternately. By the PA announcer here at Concordia does an outstanding job. Again for the Trojans, Kennedy Gray, Sophie Frederick, Abby John, Lexi Hanks, and Eva Fullingstead. The Yellow Jackets with Cora Grismer, Kaya Anderson, Kennedy Pilgrim, Willow Thiel, and Riley Mickelson. We thank you for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. And it's an honor to bring it to you tonight here from Concordia. Again, I'm Jason Groth with Lance Rock. We thank you for tuning in. As we are perched high above Concordia Auditorium. We've got our steps in to get up here, but we love the view. Yeah, excellent view. Just a great, like I said, the history and the tradition that comes out of this place is just come, it's just awesome to be in this venue. And uh, again, I wish they were going one team at a time. I hope I'm not making you dizzy here at home, but uh, trying to get those starters as they're coming out. Yellow Jackets in their traditional home gray with yellow and black trim. All the Trojans in their road whites with purple trim. As we're just moments away from the opening tap. Again, look for quick starts here. Look for the nerves, which team comes out maybe a little bit with that, that early jitters. And uh, two teams that are ultimately familiar with each other, it might be the surprise. Is there a different defense in store? Is there a different look that, the, that either team's been looking at? I think something will change. And, and like you said, both games were really different. Uh, from each other. Uh, third one, let's see what happens, but uh, 
again, two great teams coming to battle here and, and can't ask for much more than that. Little field to take the opening tap for the Yellow Jackets. Looks like Falling's had to take it for the Trojans. Opening tap won by the Trojans, and they'll have the opening possession with the basketball. Here's John. John quickly to the right side will settle things down. Hands it off there. Three on its way. That's off. The iron doesn't roll on a good shot attempt there by Gray. Rebound to the Yellow Jackets. He'll come back the other way with it. Quickly up ahead. Here's Anderson. Anderson dribbles in the lane, floats up a shot. No. Rebound grabbed by the Trojans. He'll come back with speed. Here's John in the lane, kick out near side. The pass there for Graves, thought about it. Now pass in the backcourt, and there's that nerves a little bit. It goes out of bounds, that half court will be Yellow Jacket basketball. Miscommunication in the backcourt by the Trojans leads to the first turnover. Kai Anderson and the Yellow Jackets will have a sideline inbound. And you can see both teams trying to go up tempo a little bit. Nerves maybe getting a little bit. Uh, a few turnovers, a, a few shots, maybe that would have went early. Not happening right now. Mickelson with it inside Thiel. Thiel up strong, shot is short. Rebound grabbed by the Trojans. And the Trojans will bring it up court with Abby John. Nice double team by the Trojans right there, Jason, as they uh, front and back and just gave Willow a little different look. Frederick drives, kicks now to Gray. Gray with Mickelson on her, picks up her dribble with the feed there to have kick back out. Now into the corner, 16 on the shot clock, drive and kick in the lane. Nice dribble drive, but shot blocked by Thiel on the shot attempt by Falingstaff. Now Anderson dangerously with it, gets away with maybe a carry. Goes near side to Mickelson. Now Grismer inside Thiel. Thiel up strong, good for two. And the Yellow Jackets on the board first. Going inside to Willow Thiel, as expected. Back the other way is Falingstaff off the glass for two, and we're tied just like that. A quick transition bucket as Barnesville was pushing off the made basket. And there you saw Abby John not scoring, but finding the open teammate. Grismer to the hoop, Strine draws a foul inside, and Grismer will have a chance to set a three-point play. Again, you, you start the game and you start to wonder here a little bit how it's going to be officiated, how it's going to be called. Barnesville probably wishing the foul on Willow, maybe down low, and then the, maybe a turnover on Anderson. So... Uh, good start for everybody. Free throw good by Grismer. Uh, foul was on Fallingstad, her first. Here's John with it. Hands it off now to Haft. Far side, Gray. Gray looking to drive, gets cut off by Mickelson. Now still battling. He brings it back up to the outside. Here's John with it. John, left hand dribble into the lane. Fights through, floats up a shot. No good. Feel on the board for the Yellow Jackets. Up ahead, Grismer. Grismer, now Pilgrim. Thiel thought about it, puts it down. Well, back in, kick out. Mickelson thought, passes the shot up. Now Grismer, right side, Pilgrim, inside. Thiel, the help comes. Thiel off the glass for two more. High off the glass on that one, and I don't know if it was knowing the double team was coming. If that's the case, that was a smart move by Willow. Barnesville right back on the attack, no foul called. John throws up a tough shot. 7-2 in favor of the Jackets early going. Now Grismer drives, pull up jumper for her. In and out, no good. Rebound grabbed by John and the Trojans. John with it. He's going to drive against Pilgrim. They both slip and fall. Incidental contact is a call. They let it play on, and nice job coming back. Sophie Frederick taps it away from Grismer, and she was getting ready to go to the hoop. 15 minutes to go, Yellow Jackets lead 7-2 in our first half. Again, great start by the Yellow Jackets, probably getting what they wanted, get Willow started underneath. As that collapses, look for that, that toss out to a shooter who's getting ready, nothing better here. Nice pass, entry pass to Pilgrim. Grisberg's gonna launch too strong, long rebound, corralled and out running, and now is Sophie Frederick. Frederick, I'll give it back to John. John uses the screen, a long three on its way off the back iron. Rebound, no grabbed by the Trojans. A three again, that's off the iron, no good. And Mickelson gets the rebound. Mickelson up ahead to Anderson. Anderson, the layup, it's good for Kai Anderson. And the Yellow Jackets are off on a 9-2 run, and they take and force a Trojan timeout. 14-31 to go. Yellow Jackets lead by seven. 
again, nice, nice movement and offensive sets by the Yellow Jackets, kind of picking up the pace a little bit more than I almost thought they would with this, this bigger, longer floor. Uh, but they're doing a nice job, and they're running straight through, like vertical into the lane and catching a lot of the Trojans looking for Thiel, and, and uh, they should, but now those other ladies are slipping and getting right into the lane, and then they're making ultimately good passes. I think if you're the Barnesville Trojans, there's no such thing as a seven-point shot. Get into your offense. Uh, we really have seen them a little bit more on a, a staggered, fast pace. I think if they get into their offense, because they slowed both of the first two games down a little bit uh, until the second half, get into your offensive set, get yourself ready to go, and I see Coach Super must have thought maybe they would slow down, pick them up in full court press, maybe continue to make them go faster than they want to. Frederick across half court, down to the back court. Drive dish, now it's back to John. Kennedy Pilgrim on her screen comes, now John will go left against Pilgrim. Pressure on her, John forces the pass on, it's stolen by Grismer. Grismer to Thiel now, Thiel. Pull up jumper off mark. Tough shot there, falling down the loose change. And here comes John back the other way. John drives in the lane, contact. Ball's tapped out of bounds. will stay with the Trojans. Again, it's one of those things. I think they're, Barnesville's trying to race up and down the floor. I don't think it's, it, it hasn't been successful for them. I'll just say it. They need to get a good set here and a good look. Shorts on the quick shot attempt there by Haft. Had the wide open shot off the inbound play. Now a kick out. Mickelson thought about it. Thiel now to Anderson. Grismer in the corner. Will dribble in the lane. Kick out cross for Mickelson for three. It's good. Wiley Mickelson. A big three pointer for her and the Yellow Jackets lead by 10. Here's Gray with it. Batted away by Mickelson, but it goes in the lane. Falling sad. Draws the foul. No, she doesn't. No call. From way up here, it looked like there was a lot of contact, but nothing there. Pass near side, out of bounds. It will go to the Yellow Jackets. Kate Diggins will come in for Theo. Trojans make a pair of changes as well. 13-18 to go. It's 12-2 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. Again, I was kind of one of the things I was thinking about on the drive up here, Jason, was the physicality of this game and they really seem like they're letting them play it's not been an advantage to Barnesville right now in any means is uh, a lot of physical contact as you're driving in the lane John with it comes back out for falling set she works through the lane everyone in the gym wanted her to shoot Mickelson closes now off the foot of Grismer and out of bounds. It'll stay with the Trojans with 11 on the shot clock. And again, I think you get a little shell-shocked right away when the, you see a 10-point deficit. And again, it's a long game, and, and there's lots of things going, and I've always believed in the law of averages. And I think you just have to settle down. I haven't seen a real good set yet out of the Trojans. There's one. And falling set of the hoop gets the foul. And the end one opportunity for... Ava Fallingstead, who now has four points for the Trojans. Exactly what I was talking about, Jason, in the, that off time there was get into a set, run off a screen. They did just that. They got the best of all worlds. They got a layup and now a free throw opportunity, which goes in. Fallingstead with all five. So we wait to see who the foul was on. I believe it was Diggins. They, oh, nope. It's on Grismer. That was her first. And now a turnover. And here comes the Trojans back. Quickly up ahead. Hins with the layup. Good. Hines, excuse me. Isn't it amazing when you get one to fall, all of a sudden now uh, it looks like a whole different confidence in this Barnesville Trojan team. Grismer drives, tries to feed it down low for Diggins. It's turned over and out of bounds. Decent idea. The execution just wasn't there. You could see what she wanted to do. As Steel will come back in for the Yellow Jackets. So the Jackets will go back with their two post offense with Diggins and Thiel. I'm not sure I like this pressure that they've had, Jason. They're, they're letting it easy into the front court, and there's another layup. That's falling set again. Now Thiel, baseline, cut off to help comes, tries to feed it down low for Mickelson. Out of bounds, last touch by the Yellow Jackets, and the momentum is starting to turn. 
after a 12-2 run. It's a 7-0 run for the Trojans with 12 minutes to go. I wouldn't be surprised at the, another basket on this possession. Coach TJ Super takes a timeout, resettles the, the ladies, but this press has kind of allowed the Trojans to get into the flow of what they want to do, and they, they're spacing the floor really well right now. John gets the shooter's roll. You knew it was a matter of time before she would get on the scoreboard. She does that right there. It's now a 9-0 run for the Trojans with 11.40 to go. Theo with it to Pilgrim. Gets the screen from Theo. Now drives a switch and help off of that. Now it goes down low to Pilgrim. The reverse layup is good. Nice feed there and nice roll off the screen by Pilgrim. If you look from the last three possessions to that one, Jason, the difference is the spacing of the floor. Yellow Jackets too compacted the last two possessions. Much better job spacing that time. John works off a screen in the lane. Now there's a foul as she took a couple of hits. It's just a matter who it's going to be on. That is on Kennedy Pilgrim, her first. Again, I wrote down one of the things, know how to quickly forget, and Barnesville's quickly forgot that early start. Now they're on a roll. Front iron three, no good. Rebound. Collided four ends up in the hands of Diggins, who tries to let it up the field. Dangerous pass. Nice job coming across there by Haft. And it goes out of bounds with 11.02 to go. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. 14-11 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. On the scoreboard, the Yellow Jackets are the Cobbers. I'd love to see uh, Kate Diggins in a high post. Uh, here, Yellow Jackets try to force it, another turnover. Kate Diggins in the high post and look that high low to Willow. Uh, it's gonna ultimately, um, jump ball is called, ultimately gonna force Barnesville to either guard Diggins at the free throw line or guard Willow, and that's a nice open look for Diggins. Kai Anderson will check in, as will Greta Razor. I'm gonna say Corey Grismer was dangerously close to picking up a second foul with a reach in, but did a nice job of getting the ball and then tying it up. Right, and I picture this, Jason, as a heavyweight. It's going to be blow for blow. You're going to see one team go on a run, then you're going to see another team. Uh, until those last three or four minutes, I think it might ultimately be that last run. There's that high-low you talked about. Willow Thiel with the bucket. And the Jackets back up five. Now Abby John. Final worker magic now feeds a pass there for Haft. Inside it goes, it's still turned over off the hands of the cutter. And now the Yellow Jackets come back with it. Thiel. In the trouble, now kicks it out, but she traveled. And that's one of those things, she's letting the pressure come instead of w reacting with the pr knowing that it's coming and throwing first. Yeah, I agree, and on the other side, Jason, I. I, I like the high pick and roll for Abby John. They got to get somebody cutting towards the basket. The, it, we're, they're too tight together. The high pick and roll comes. Somebody should be slashing on that look, and they're going to get a layup eventually because they're, they're concentrating so much on where John is going. The Yellow Jackets have changed up their look defensively. They get the ball inside. Shot altered. No. Rebound put back. Good for Hins. Hins now has four and has given the Trojans some valuable minutes off the bench as it's a three-point game now. As we approach 9.40. Mickelson to Diggins, the high-low, too strong on the pass, and the difference, and you're seeing it from up here, you gotta move a little bit and give yourself an angle on some of those entry passes. Right, what I'd like to see is, that time I thought Diggins was way too high. You can't be up at the three-point line and try to make that pass. Also, Willow needs to come up and then spin and then seal her her lady that's defending her, she's going to have a wide open layup, and then all you have to do is lob it in there if you're Diggins. That was a tough pass she tried to make. Sat with it. Now the Yellow Jackets go to the 2-3 with 13 seconds to go on the shot clock. Here's Gray with it. Gray to Cassette. Cassette with the head fake. Now the near side. Goes to Hayes. Bounce pass into the lane. Four on the shot clock. A quick jumper is good on the baseline by Hands, and she's got six. And it's a one-point lead. A 12-2 run and then a 9-0 run, and now we're back to pretty much square. Anderson now to Mickelson. 
Wide open three for Mickelson off the mark. Works as a perfect pass for Thiel, and the putback is good, and Thiel's got eight now. Back the other way come the Trojans. There for Hintz, in the lane, poked away from her. To the floor, Diggins gets it now, Mickelson. Quickly up ahead to Anderson, now to Thiel. Thiel pull up jumper, Ooh, that was offline. Tied up jump ball. The backboard's getting some work with 8.21 to go as it's 18 to 15 in this first half. But yet, what a great game. I mean, just that ebb and flow of, like we said, you gotta quickly forget. Things go bad, you have a turnover, you can't live with that turnover because you're gonna get a possession again really, really early. Again, now John back. I'd like to see that high, low uh, Yellow Jackets to his zone. So again, look for the cutters here uh, and look for open shots. Three-pointer on its way off the back iron. Rebound grabbed there by Razor on the shot attempt by Frederick. It's an 18-15 ball game. Three-pointer from Razor off the front iron. Rebound John. John looks behind her now. Looking to go coast to coast. Snipes through with the Euro step and lays it up and in for two. And it's a one-point game. As advertised between these two teams. 7.30 to go, first half. We thank you for tuning in. Inside it goes, too strong. Turned over. Okay, again, you know, I, I hate to sound like I'm beating the. That one was from about the Cobber sign. Dribble up, force that defense to come, lay it over the top. I like what they're doing, the Yellow Jackets. They're just not executing it real well right now. So coaching staff going to have to tell them you got to get in better position to make that lob. Uh, look for John to get a three-pointer here because they're going to throw inside. Fullingstead jumper, no. Good defense there by Diggins in the zone. Stayed straight up on the Fullingstead look. Here's Starzl. Starzl now to Grismer. Grismer looks to drive, kicks for Anderson. Too strong, but tapped out of bounds. Got this little barrier here in front of us <laughs> in the press box. I can't see it on camera, but it kind of is tough on some of those passes here on the sideline. Yeah, and I'll just say excellent camera work for not, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, it's kind of tough. I lose sight sometimes of going to the basket. Yellow Jackets, I think, ultimately are going to look back and say they got what they wanted. They just got to execute. Pilgrim for three. Doesn't get the drop, but Thiel's there for the rebound and one. And Thiel have a chance at a three-point play. And again, you look at a play like that, Jason, and you say, how do you not find Willow Thiel to box her out? Uh, That's on Heft. You know, it's, it's, you've got to find her at all times as she hits the free throw as well. Thiel now has 11. Here's John with it. Finds Gray. Falling sand, kicks. Driving baseline. Reverse layup, nicely done by Heft. And Heath puts it in. Now we're just going offensive possession to offensive possession. Thiel drives in a foul. And Thiel earns a trip to the line. <coughs> Barnesville coaching st staff not real happy with that call. From where I'm at, I can understand they're outside of that cylinder. Uh, again, kind of lowered shoulder by Willow. Misses the first end of the one and one Again, uh, you always hear no harm, no foul when they don't hit the free throws, but it's also a foul on one of your players and also takes a, a foul away from Willow if that's called on her. Free throw good by Thiel. Makes it 22-19, six and a half to go. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. Pass near side with it. Here's Frederick. And Stars will battle with her. Frederick to the floor, saves it. It comes back to John, though. Shot clock at 20, so plenty of time for the Trojans. Nice head fake there and a drive by Gray in the lane. A lot of contact goes out of bounds. I don't, you can't see it in the corner off the screen. Head coach Ryan Baum said wanted that call as well. And I don't blame him with 6.06 to go. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. And, you know, you got to be careful because if all of a sudden those are called, that's two quick ones on, on Willow, and that will drastically change the game. Driving in the lane off the glass. Too strong. Rebound to Grismer. 
Okay, I'd like to thank both Booster Clubs for their support to tonight's broadcast, the Barnesville Backdoor Club, as well as the Yellow Jackets as they go inside the field off the glass for two. Nice job on that one. Uh, Trojans a little bit late on the backside help that time. They've been early uh, or on, on that. And again, it was a, a little bit different matchup with a little bit smaller guard uh, behind. It was a lot easier for Willow to go up and make that one. Great. Kick him there for Frederick. Comes back to her. Now Frederick in the backcourt drives into the lane, kicks it off. Here's Fallingstead going at Thiel. Now kicks it out. With eight on the shot clock, John will do some work. John in the lane, and an offensive foul is called on Abby John. Again, a lot of Barnesville Trojans right underneath us. Jason, you can start to sense their frustration a little bit on how the fouls are being called, and I, you know, we're a distance away. I can't say that I blame them at this point, but not the best view for us to say one way or another. Uh, but again, I, we're, it's a five-point game. Again, you settle back down. You know each team's going to make runs. You just have to stop it and get your own basket. Mickelson inside. Thiel off the glass. No, she's fouled, and Thiel will go to the line and shoot a pair. Follows on falling stand, her second. Thiel gets the first. Yellow Jackets lead 25 19. Thiel has 15 to lead all scores. Misses that one, long rebound. It's the Abby Jump. Hands with it. Now hands it off to John. John. Steps back, launches the three, that's off the line. And Mickelson, the board, off the tough miss. Now she goes behind the back. To the right side, Anderson, look it in, Thiel. Thiel gets the roll, and it's in for two, and a timeout coming from head coach Ryan Bonstead as the Yellow Jackets have now went on a run and lead 27-19. to 19. Yeah, and I'm trying to catch a breath here because this game's been such back and forth, but I, I don't think either team... Yellow Jackets are doing a much better job of spacing the floor right now, and I think you're seeing that with, with Willow. You're, they're also trying to get her the ball before uh, that double team comes, and, and I don't know. The Tro Trojans haven't been fronting Willow like they did to start the game. I'd be curious to see if they go back to that. They're starting to get some of those post players in foul trouble. Uh, Fallingstead with her second, you, you kind of want to protect that. For her to not get her third, she shouldn't if she fronts Willow. Um, but Yellow Jackets are running a really nice offensive set now. They're, it's kind of right-hand side dominated. So you wonder if you're going to push the ball or try to push the Yellow Jackets to the left side. If you're the Trojans, I think it's back to what we said earlier when that first run happened. Get a set, get all your players involved, run off, uh, and if, if starts, things start to break down, find Abby John and then let her go one-on-one. -on -one. But they've been their best when they've moved that basketball around tonight. Last time head coach Ryan Bumstead called timeout. It calmed things down, and the Trojans were able to get right back into it. Will that happen again with four and a half to go in our first half of the Section 8-2A semifinal here from Concordia? Gray launches, that's off the iron, long rebound, tapped around, it goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Trojans. Tough angle, I thought the refs were gonna discuss a little bit, but they say off a foot and out of bounds. I did do notice there was that nonverbal communication there. Yeah, they did look at each other and it was a tough, tough angle for both of them. Extra possession here for the Trojans. They have to make good with this one. And a new shot clock as it went to 20 is driving to the hoop, basket, no, it's a travel on gray a nice defense there by mickelson for the yellow jackets again it's uh, it's it's fun to be here as one side erupted thinking they were going to get an add one and then the other half of the crowd uh was uh, joyous with the travel call and now they go inside the field and the backside help draws the foul that'll be the six on the trojans Trojan 
That's on Kennedy Gray, her first. Yellow Jackets will inbound Pilgrim to Grismer. Short jumper off the glass, good. Nice inbounds play set up by the Yellow Jackets as Grismer has that one to go. Now the Yellow Jackets by 10, and Grismer has five. John with it now. She's going to launch. It's no good. Feel the rebound. And the Yellow Jackets, an opportunity to push. And now that pass is too late. John came back and intercepted it nicely. Here's side. Here's Haft. Back to John. Looking to drive in. Kick out to Gray. Cross court pass for Cassette. Gets cut off now to John. Shot clock at 10. Cassette with it. Far side, a three on its way. It's good. Auburn hints. Big basket there by the Trojans for sure. Uh, needing that one. Grismer answers coast to coast. And the Jackets by nine. Now back to the way. Falling stand and a foul. She'll shoot two. Just couldn't get the shot to drop. Did falling stand. Fouls on Mickelson, her first. Just the third on the Yellow Jackets. With 2.45 to go. Falling stead, his first free throw too strong. Again, we talked about in the opening, the little things. Yellow Jackets ran a really good inbounds play. Free throws are going to come into play. All of these little things in the end kind of become, add up to be the big things as she hits the second one uh, when we get to the final score. Grismer. Now to Mickelson. They swing over Grismer for three. No, it doesn't drop. Long rebound grab there by Gray. And the Trojans have a chance to cut in the lead here with this possession. John, the floater, gets it to go. Nice, smooth, floating shot there from Abby John. She's got six. And again, we talked about the reference of being a heavyweight uh, boxing match. Here we go again. Barnesville making their turn with a little run, cutting this lead to six, and now another turnover. John with it. We'll settle it down. Had the open look, but Grismer came back. Down to Pilgrim. Pilgrim to layup. No, but she's fouled, and Pilgrim will shoot a pair. Just didn't see the cutter fast enough, did John? That allowed the Yellow Jackets to do a nice job coming back. And Grismer got the steal, set up Pilgrim. And Pilgrim will shoot two as the foul was on Gray, her second. And you don't say that many times where John misses the cutter, uh, but nice set. Pilgrim makes the first one. Uh, great fast break by the Yellow Jackets. I love the spacing and how they waited. Got draw the draw the lady Trojan over, and then nice job by Pilgrim just going hard to the basket and, and making something happen. Second free throw is good for Kennedy Pilgrim. 33-25, under two minutes to go. We thank you for tuning in on Jacket Activities. We'd also like to thank the Barnesville Boosters and the Yellow Jacket Boosters for support of tonight's broadcast and making this possible. With the basketball hands, kicks it out to the far side, Gray. Gray getting guarded closely by Pilgrim into the lane, fires up a shot, draws a foul. Good question. I believe that was John on the drive with the foul, but that's the first time I think she's drawn contact and actually got the foul called tonight, and that might bode well for the Trojans as, as she's a dribble drive type player. John at the line, the foul is on Pilgrim, her second. Just can't get that free throw to go. 137 to go, Yellow Jackets in the lead. Little Theo leading all scores with 17. And that second free throw goes for John, she's now got seven. How the Yellow Jackets? to Razor. She will fire a three. It's good. Greta Razor hits a three and the Jackets are back up 10. Ends with it. Pass near side. Mickelson on the defense and it's turned over. Looking for Cassette and it goes out of bounds and the Yellow Jackets with another opportunity to extend this double digit lead.
Prismer to Mickelson. Down low field, but it's tapped away. And back come the Trojans. Ends with it. Now to Cassette. To John. One minute to go. John will drive, float up a shot through traffic, gets that to go. And now a two for one opportunity if the <laughs> for the Trojans here. Potentially is the Yellow Jackets with a 36-28 lead. Interesting, you talked about foul trouble as the Yellow Jackets on offense, but Pilgrim goes out of the game with two. John goes right to the basket and connects for two. Uh, we'll watch that in the second half. Anderson, a deep three. It's good. Kaya Anderson hits the deep three, and the Yellow Jackets lead by 11. Here's John bringing it up short. John kicks it over there. Took his head inside. It goes shot. No. Rebound tapped out of bounds. They'll stay with the Trojans with 11.4. Frederick with it. Now John. Game clock at five. She drives. Poked away from her. Now it comes near side, falling sad for three, no good. Rebound fought for, and that will do it for the first half where the Yellow Jackets will take a 39-28 lead into the break and a good first half for the Yellow Jackets. Really good, yellow, really good first half for the Yellow Jackets. I think they did a lot of things. Maybe one of the best things they did was get out of that full court press as that kind of led the, that initial spark for the Barnesville Trojans. Uh, Barnesville Trojans could just find their way to the basket a lot easier uh, with the Yellow Jackets in that pressure. So I don't expect to see that uh, in the second half unless, unless things uh, go differently. Uh, kind of a physical game, Jason, and I'm kind of surprised. There's a lot of contact, and I know it's playoff basketball and everybody can say whatever. I think it started right from the opening minutes, and it's carried through that uh, you can get away with some contact down there in the paint. I just don't know how much because there have been fouls called down there and it's hard to get that judge from up here. So changes for the second half as you're frantically adding stuff up here. I'll, I'll kind of keep rolling, but uh, I think if you're Barnesville, you got to get back into running your sets. I think there's, they were best when they were running their sets. When they try to kind of get going too fast, Things weren't rolling well, and, and they haven't, to be very honest, they haven't shot the ball well in the first half. I don't expect that to stay. I, I always believe, and those of you who followed our broadcast for a long time, that I, I am a law of averages guy, that if you shoot 40% in the season, eventually you're going to shoot 40% in the game that you're in. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen, and, and those are the games you wish you could get back. I think the Barnesville Trojans will shoot better in the second half. I, I just, they're, they're too good a team to not have that role for them. So that being said, the Yellow Jackets maybe switch up some defenses. Uh, they showed a little bit of zone, not a lot of it, so we might see that in the second half. And if you're the Yellow Jackets, you keep doing what you're doing. You take your opportunity when it knocks. Uh, Willow Thiel's been great underneath the basket, but so has the other ladies. They've, they've attacked when they've had a chance. They've shot the threes when they're open, and, and they're doing a lot of things really well right now. At the half, the Yellow Jackets lead 39-28. We're going to take a little bit of a break, come back, and we'll continue this halftime show again. We'd like to thank the Barnesville Basketball Boosters and the Perm Backcourt Club for their support of tonight's broadcast here on the Yellow Jacket Activities Hub.
Well, welcome back into Concordia Moorhead. Jason Grove with Lance Rock as we're moments away from the start of the second half. Good first half for the Yellow Jackets. They are led by Willow Thiel with the first half, 17 points. Cora Grismer has seven, five on the board for Kai Anderson, four for Kennedy Pilgrim, and three each for Greta Razor, excuse me, and Riley Mickelson. Scoring on the other side for the Trojans leading the way, Auburn Hins and Abby John have nine each. Eva Fully Sad with eight, and Lexi Haft with two. You're scoring for the Trojans at the line. The Trojans were three of five. The Yellow Jackets, six of eight. Foul trouble, nothing really to note. Eva Fully Sad with two, and Kennedy Gray with two for the Trojans on the Yellow Jackets side. I think Kennedy Pilgrim with two. You know, and, and there's not a lot of fouls, but those are important fouls. Uh, I look at Folingstead. Uh, she's got the task of, of fronting or, or being a part of the double team on Willow. And you look at the other way, Pilgrim has uh, John as her matchup. So, uh, again, not many fouls, but kind of critical fouls. And it might be which one of those two pick up their third one earlier uh, it might change the tide of this game and we talked about it earlier Jason it's been an ebb and flow game and the Yellow Jackets made the last run so let's see what the second half goes and you know I think it's one of those things we talked about the physicality under the basket that's Barnesville style they like to dribble drive they like to cut to the basket they like to get there they're really going to have to force the issue if, if the fouls aren't being called on that first bump you almost have to kind of force the issue and make it seem like there's more contact than there is. The danger with that is you start forgetting about making the basket and trying to create contact and getting the foul. So I think you just keep playing, and, and again, like I said, law of averages are going to battle out. I don't think John probably thought she was she had the half that she thinks she can have. Uh, and again, if you're the Yellow Jackets, I think a lot of things went really well in the first half. One thing that the Yellow Jackets were able to take advantage of, they were able to get some shots from deep as well in that first half. They hit three three-pointers. First half, Barnesville was only able to hit one from beyond the arc. Yeah, and again, I think you saw little runs in the first two games with the Trojans where they were able to hit some three-pointers, uh, and I haven't seen that yet. They just, it's either rattled in and out, it's been a little long or a little too short, and I don't know if that was the the being really excited to start the game, if it was nerves or whatever. They're a good shooting team. I've watched them multiple times. For whatever reason, the ball's not going in the basket in the first half. That being said, you're only down 11, and so you start to think that's three possessions. You hit three threes. You're, you're not down by very much. A couple points, and all of a sudden, this game is back in your favor. So... Again, the last run, so to speak, went to the Yellow Jackets. Let's see if Barnesville starts to have. It's kind of the way the game has gone, like a teeter-totter back and forth. Uh, one team gets hot, then the other team battles back. Let's see if the Trojan ha Trojans make some adjustments and have that in them to start hot right away in the, in the second half. We thank you again for tuning in tonight. We'd like to thank the Burn Back Court Club and the Barnesville Boosters of their support for tonight's broadcast without those communities coming together this broadcast doesn't happen so we'd like to thank them for their support here on the yellow jacket activities club our activities page as it's been an honor and a privilege to bring you tonight's game jason growth of lance rock as we get ready to go for this second half right and kind of interesting uh all the yellow jacket starters are, are just kind of resting on the bench and the uh Trojans are out here sh getting shots feverishly, probably kind of indicative of how the first half went. Uh, the Yellow Jackets probably feel like everything's kind of going their way, and uh, Trojans feel like they need to get a few more shots in. And again, it, it's similar in backgrounds. Uh, changing sides shouldn't be a big deal here, but again, we've seen it a lot of times, even in, in the hive, Jason, where one side just seems to shoot better than the other, and it's crazy how that happens. And this time now, both teams will be shooting to their home fan bases, so that will be a little bit different. As The joys of being here in Concordia, I like how they do it tonight. They got to our right, as you're watching on the screen, is the Barnesville fan base. 
to the left as you watch on our screen is the Purim fan base. And then that will switch with Holly and Pelican Rapids for the next game. And it's kind of nice in how they're able to do that here at Concordia. And it makes for a great atmosphere here back at Memorial Auditorium after a couple of year hiatus. Yeah, and it, there's, there's so many good things about wherever you play this game, Jason. It's going to be... I don't want the venue to take over one way or the other for people. It, this is a good. This is going to be a great game wherever it was played. And the Yellow Jackets, again, they need to come out and they, if they want to stamp their 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 name into this section finals, they could probably do it here in the first three or four minutes. You know, the the Barnesville Trojans are going to go down swinging as the, as that's just who they are, and they battle hard. Yellow Jackets will have the opening inbound, but we have a slight delay because I believe our scoreboard operator may be away from the table at the moment. That's just speculation <laughs> as we're high above. Yeah, they're, I think they're going to send both teams back to their respective sidelines and kind of an awkward way to start the second half. But again, uh, kids are resilient and they bounce back but again we talked a lot j earlier Jason about a few things about stick to what got you there and I think Barnesville didn't have the success they wanted but they did stick to what they the dribble drive get into the paint kick it out to their uh, outside shooters and hopefully they go in and I think they're not going to deviate from that as as we get going and also uh, there's a I'll let you describe it but and again, if the Yellow Jackets, they're they're gonna uh, they're gonna do what they do, get the ball to Willow Thiel, and then uh, let let your guard play dictate after that. A frantic sprint to the scorers table as they go inside. Thiel off the glass, no, gets their own rebound. The putback is good. Thiel quickly has 19 for the Yellow Jackets. Barnesville got what they wanted with that first miss, and then Willow uh, sticking with it uh, puts that second one in. And uh, again, you don't want to see this go much further than what it is right now. Turnaround jumper off the glass doesn't drop there for Haft. Yellow Jackets aboard quickly up ahead. Mickels in the lane is open for her. she drives shot no rebound grab by the Trojans. And now slung it down will be Kennedy Gray to get it into the same hands of Abby John. Thought we were going to have a track meet there for a second. John. Slowed down by the Trojans. The feed to Fulling stand is no good. Barnesville fans on that side, I think, wanted the contact. Now the cut to the hoop. Pilgrim tries to kick it out. It's stolen away, John. Two on two for the Trojans. John will work. Fire up a tough shot. No good. Feel the rebound. Now Grismer to Anderson. 4-3. Off the iron. No good. Rebound. Tied up. Grabbed. And a held ball. And he'll go to the Yellow Jackets. It's Riley Mickelson. Battled inside and tied it up. I think it should be Trojan ball, Jason. As I don't think they flipped the at half. And it is Trojan basketball. John will bring it up court. Now gets the pass back from Hins. Excuse me, from Haft. Now in the lane, Gray. Working Haft with Pilgrim. That's the switch. So see if the Trojans try to take advantage with the defensive switch there. But now the shot clock working down to eight. Here's John. Gets the screen, drives, kicks. An open three from the corner, too strong. Rebound grabbed by Thiel on the shot by Frederick. And those are the shots that went in the first couple games, Jason. They're just not going tonight. Pass inside by Pilgrims. Tapped out of bounds. They'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. So you called it now, Cora Grismer switches off. She's now on Abby John. So let's see uh, if it changes things up. Pilgrim did a pretty nice job in the first half. Pilgrim will now have a baseline inbound. Negotiates where she's going to inbound from. But it goes out of the hands of Mickelson. Again, I think Mickelson was looking really quick for Willow coming, Willow Thiel coming across the middle. Uh, took her eyes off the ball just for a second. 41-28, 16 minutes to go with the berth into the Section 2A championship. Ball out of bounds. It's turned over. Defense again. Tough pass. The ideas are there, and I think it's just the execution. They want Chief chucked that pass a little too hard through the lane. 
Yeah, it hasn't been a pretty start to this first, the second half, Jason. And when that happens, you go to the who you believe in, and that's Thiel. Thiel gets two shots, and now there's that physicality underneath the basket. John with it. Now the kick out. A three on its way. It's good. Sophie Frederick hits her first three-pointer of the game. And Barnesville cuts it to 10 with a big three-pointer there. And I think she hit four in a row in Purim and really kind of led them uh, to, to get a little bit bigger lead. So let's see if she catches fire here. Grismer inside Thiel. Thiel to the hoop, but she traveled. Or no, there's a foul. Foul on the floor is what they called. I, he spun some hands he around. He did that swing some me. hands around. I, I agree with you, Jason, that they did. And I think they caught a grab of the arm. Again, a little late on that rotation by the Trojans. Uh, they were earlier set in the first half. And now, now you get your travel. So, uh, again, maybe you just saw the future, Jason, as, uh, as we're going. But. Uh, interesting start to the second half for both teams and the officials right now. And uh, that's, I don't want any, I don't want to be on either team or officiating tonight. So I'll just stop right there. <laughs> Pull up jumper from the free throw line is good. But in that one is Lexi Haft. She's got four now. The Trojans have cut it to eight. Again, that's that early run we talked about. We really, the Trojans needed. Uh, Thiel's earning that trip to the free throw line there. She got hit hard, but I, it's kind of what you notice. I don't know, maybe this is what I notice is now they're kind of letting her have that entry pass, and then they're attacking hard after the pass gets there. Exactly, and, and if she's going to make a layup, they're going to make her earn the layup as she misses her free throw, and uh, the backside help that time uh, didn't look like they even really thought about stopping they were just going through and hoping to get the basketball Thiel misses them both long rebound though and Thiel gets it Anderson is going to drive in the lane floater off the mark rebound grabbed Trojans coming back John Frederick likes that spot launches from it and it's short and it goes out of bounds on the near side good look yeah and that uh, if that one would have went Jason I think you would have picked up on the crowd uh, Mike Barnesville was the, the crowd was ready to explode there because that would have got it back within five uh, plus put them on a nice little roll again here. Thiel take a break as Diggins will come in for her and that pass batted away by John in the back door out of bounds. I'll stay with the Yellow Jackets with 14 and a half to go. The Yellow Jackets lead 41 33 good crowd coming in to cover Memorial Auditorium. Good thing we got here when we did for that great parking spot. <laughs> As Grismer will bring it up court. Grismer hands it over to Pilgrim now for Anderson. Back up top, stolen away. Frederick, the layup is good for Sophie Frederick. She gets a steal, she finishes. And now it's 41-35, and we'll see how long the Yellow Jackets keep Thiel on the bench. Grismer with it now to Mickelson. Inside they go to Diggins, bat it away. Nice job defensively there by Haft and Diggins in that battle in the paint. Boy, and that was really a nice defensive play by Haft there. As if she doesn't get it, there's no but no backside help, so it would have been an easy lay-in for Diggins. Again, I think if you're the Yellow Jackets, use that forearm just a little bit longer to hold off that, and you're going to get that, that over-the-top lob pass. Three-pointer from Anderson, no good. Rebound grabbed by the Trojans. Up ahead, Frederick. Now John with it. Gets a screen. She's going to just launch the three and hit it. Abby John hits the three. It's 41-38. And you called a Thiel up off the bench for ready to check in in the next timeout. Timeout called by head coach TJ Super. The Trojans have rallied back. It's now 41-38, 13 and a half to go. And Lance, one thing I was going to touch on before this timeout, I think the Yellow Jackets, me personally, might take from up here. I don't know what you think. They've got to value some of these possessions. They're taking rush shots. They're not really working that shot clock. And when you have the lead, that's what you want to use the time on your side. Right. And now I think you, you're almost to that point. you got to go again because it's only a three-point lead. I agree with you. When you had that 12-point lead, 
not that they were questionable shots. They're good shots, maybe not at that time. And that's just that basketball timing. And sometimes you lose track of that. And, and how do you blame them? I mean, they're playing on a college floor. And probably for a lot of these ladies, some of their biggest games of their lives, the Yellow Jackets had some big games last year. Uh, some of these girls are way more involved this year than they were last year. So it's hard to say put the reins on, especially with that's what you've done all year. Nice feet inside, feel the finish. Nice play out of the timeouts. On a great entry past the feel. Head fake, drive Frederick. Now to the near side, Cassette. Free throw line, jumper off the glass, too strong. Rebound tapped it out. And it's grabbed by Haft. Haft now struggles, but gets it to John. John's going to launch again. That one's off, nothing. The net. And Mickelson will bring it back up court. Again, yeah, just a little too deep there. The, if, if she was two steps in, it would have been a swish. But the high-low entry works perfectly there for the Yellow Jackets. Diggins feeds Thiel. Thiel to finish. Jackets back up seven now. Way better spacing on that one. But John comes back and answers. Now has 14. 45-40. It's going to be a fun 12 and a half to decide a finalist to the Section 8 AA championship. Cross court it goes. Mickelson. She will launch a three-pointer. No good. And the rebound grabbed by Abby John. Here's John with it. Nice to the lane and his foul on Pilgrim. That's her third and John to the line. Again, I, I see better spacing out of the Trojans, Jason, and I don't know if you noticed that or not. First half, passes were like within five feet of each other. Now they've spread the floor. Actually, what's opened up is that middle free throw line. If you look, they're finding people there. They just got to hit that shot, and then they allow Abby John to drive as she misses the front end of the two. Uh, but they're they, spacing the floor much better right now, creating some openings, and now getting their dribble drives going. And again, it's going to leave some open looks for three. It, it hasn't been their strength tonight, but I, I, think, it'll, I think it'll turn around. We had a lot of horns honking there for a little while. <laughs> Fraser was subbed in. Then they sent her back. Because Pilgrim exited for the sub. And I think she came in too fast. So they're trying to make sure she's into the scorebook for the second half. And now she's allowed back into the game. There was, just, there was mass confusion by a lot of people, including the two of us on that one. John will shoot the second, and the free throw is good. Well, the, the joy is how I figured that out is from the time of being a PA announcer <laughs> and seeing kids do not like to check in at the dot, and they like to just run on the floor. Yeah, the you good still got to check in. The good old days of checking in uh, are, are long gone, I think. Grismer through the lane. The layup too strong. Rebound tapped around. Mickelson gets it. Now Grismer has it again. The Yellow Jackets get to extend the possession. Cross court, it goes the Razor now to Mickelson. Dangerously toes the baseline. Now tries to force a pass inside. It's stolen away. And once again, Abby John has. She fights through the lane, and Mickelson steals it away. Mickelson, the feet up ahead to Grismer. Grismer, the layup. No, doesn't fall. Rebound down low. They fight for it out of bounds. Out of bounds are a foul, but I think the thing is, the Trojan player, Lexi Hafe, grabbed it standing out of bounds. And that is the call. It'll go to the Yellow Jackets. Right. Good eyesight on that one, Jason. And, and you, you called it perfectly. And again, I think what you said about the Yellow Jackets, you can now say about the Trojans. You're down by four points. If that dribble drive isn't there, kick it out. And here's another steal. Here's Gray. Or excuse me, that's Frederick. Back to her. She'll take a baseline three. It's good. Sophie Frederick. She's got eight in the second half, and the Trojans have pulled to within one. Exactly what I talked about. They didn't force it that time. They let the defense set up, found an open three-point shooter, and she drilled the three-pointer. Razor inside, Thiel tied up, and a foul. The Trojan fans thought it was a clean steal, but it's a foul. On the Trojans. 
That's on Abby John, her second. Anderson back in for the Yellow Jackets. Eleven oh four to go. The Yellow Jackets by a point. Razor with it to Grismer. Back to Anderson. In the lane, kick out Diggins. Now to Razor. Shot clock at 20. And nothing's moving. The clock and the shot clock are not moving. So this is a free possession for everyone in the gym. And it goes out of bounds. And Extended now basketball, Jason. Now it was going for one second. Play on, right? Play on. John will bring it up court. The Yellow Jackets have changed their defensive look. Haft. Throws a pass near side and Razor steps in and steals it. Anderson will bring it up court for the Yellow Jackets. Anderson drives, spins, picks up her dribble, now gets to Diggins. Cross court for Grismer. Grismer, the three off the back iron, long rebound grabbed by the Trojans. They're going to slow it down and get it to Abby John. We haven't brought this up, but this is a chance for uh, the Trojans to take the lead. And, and boy, they've struggled when they've got to this point. They just can't get over the top of the mountaintop, Jason. It, it's, it's almost unbelievable. They play so well up until they're within one, two, or three points of, of the Jackets. And then all of a sudden, the wheels come off. We have three turnovers, I think, in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back possessions. You just can't have that when you're so close. The Yellow Jackets, 24-3 and three defending section champs. Two of their three losses have come to this Trojan team. The Yellow Jackets trying to erase... That jinx here tonight, and Barnesville trying to keep the momentum going and enter a trip to this section championship. But Thiel inside puts it up and in on a nice feed. She's got 23, and the Jackets back by three. If you notice, for Willow to get that shot, they're going to have to reverse the ball multiple times and have her work back and forth in the lane. If they just pick one side, uh, the Trojans have got the number right now. Baseline jumper that time from Hafe, no good. Jackets with the ball. Pilgrim ahead of steam, fires up a shot, and she's fouled on the floor or on the way up. And Pilgrim will be at the line. Foul that time, on Annika Cassette. Free throw, no good. Yellow Jackets now six of 11 at the free throw line, 0 of three in the second half. Again, you just, it's crazy, Jason. I look up and there's still nine and a half minutes and it's not because the score, second one rims in and out. It's not because the score clock didn't start. It just, this game, for whatever reason, we're gonna get, have a lot of basketball. Cross court falling set. A three from John from the wing. Off the mark. Tied up, but a foul on the floor. This could be a big one. I believe it's on Starzl. It is. It would have been Pilgrim. It would have been her fourth. Yeah, I, I thought they were going that way, and Pilgrim almost looked. We're going to have a timeout here by the Trojans. Pilgrim almost looked like, was. is this me? Because, and again... Not that it's going to change the game like wholeheartedly, but Pilgrim's played a lot of minutes this year. She's now off of Abby John. But again, you want to have that ability that if you have to in the final minutes go back to her, you have it. Again, I just go back to you've got to get that feeling if you're the Trojans, you're oh so close. Like you just can't get over. And you wonder what would happen once if they did take the lead, if they just explode or the Yellow Jackets would come back because that's the way it's going but wow they've battled back so many times here you wonder how many times that you can fight back and in if you're the if you're the Trojans you can't allow the Yellow Jackets to go on another run and if you're the Yellow Jackets I think it's probably time to just kind of get back into Thiel but I think with the triple team Thiel can maybe find one of those open shooters and and let it rock Thiel's got six in the second half, and that's it for the Yellow Jackets. 
as they lead 47-44. Thiel on the night has 25. Excuse me, my math is wrong there. That's eight for her in the second half to lead the way for the Yellow Jackets. 25 on the night. That's why pencils have erasers, Jason, so you can cor correct those math problems. Thought about it for a second because set, but she traveled and turns it over with 9.13 to go. Again, there's another what we've talked about. You're within a three-pointer, ties it. Uh, you just can't keep turning that ball over, and that's multiple turnovers in the second half by the Trojans. Stars will now to Razor. Cross court it goes. Pilgrim inside to Thiel, and a foul inside the cylinder. Thiel gets the finish. Nice ball movement around the perimeter. Quick feed from Pilgrim inside. Thiel finishes. Fouls on Frederick. Free throw off the front iron, and the Yellow Jackets are now 0-5 from the line in the second half. Frederick thought about it. Now John. Back up top, it comes to her now at the right side. Again, they got to get it into the middle of that zone and then attack. That three's off the mark. Frederick saves it, though. Shot clock at 12. John thought about it, passed it up. Now to the free throw line, Hins shot off the mark. Rebound tapped, off a foot, out of bounds. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. Nice hustle play by Greta Razor. Off the foot of Frederick and out of bounds. Now back into the game will be Grismer for the Yellow Jackets. She'll come in for Starzl. 8.26 to go. It's a Yellow Jacket lead by five. Again, we'd like to thank the Barnesville Boosters and the Yellow Jacket Booster Backcourt Club for support of tonight's broadcast and making it possible here on the Yellow Jacket Activities page. Three-pointer from Razor off the mark, but Pilgrim's there for the rebound. She gets bumped, but it gets it to Thiel. Thiel, now to Anderson, to Grismer. They swing it over. Razor, cross-court to Pilgrim. She steps into a three. It's off the mark. And Thiel, though, gets the long offensive board, works back inside. Jumper through traffic is short, and the rebound is grabbed by Haft and the Trojans. We'll come back with Abby John. John picks up her dribble against the zone, works that middle, as you said. Haft tries to fire a pass to falling stat. It gets punted out of bounds with 7.47 to go. And again, a mistake that high school players make a lot of times. Haft tried to take that too deep into the into the Yellow Jackets. Make them come to you. Otherwise, you got an eight-foot jump shot, and that's a really makeable, nice shot. Otherwise, you drive into them. Uh, again, you get that crowded house right in the middle of the lane there, and bad things happen. Nice close by Grismer on Frederick. She wanted to take that shot. There's that mid-range jumper by Haft out of bounds by her, and it'll be Perm basketball. Great execution. Just got to make that shot, and again, it, it's easier said than done. It's easy to sit up here and say, boy, that's an easy shot. That should go in. It's not so much when there's seven minutes and 30 seconds left with a section championship berth on the line. Albert Hins checks in for Haft. Hins had the hot hand in that first half with nine. Anderson brings it across half court. It's a five-point Yellow Jacket lead. The Trojans have closed to within one multiple times. And now our scoreboard on the main screen is off, but the game is still going. Shot no good. They fight for the board. I can Keith. see it on the other side, so it's only our side, Jason. And now it's stolen by Razor. And now it's stolen back. John drives, dishes, a lot of contact, and now a foul. That's going to be on Pilgrim, is my guess. The reaction... And I think that was one of those whoopsie type fouls. It, it, it was a pinball machine back and forth. Our table tennis, if whichever one you want to use, back and forth it went. And, and again, it, it just Pilgrim was in the wrong place at the wrong time at the end of it. Gray inside, following that, kicks back to Gray. Cross court, Frederick. Frederick's going to drive. Boy, that middle's wide open, Jason. John gets the screen from Gray, now gets pressure. Tough pass here, falling set, cross court. 
Goes to Gray in the lane. Kick over. Long jumper from Fallingstead. Misses everything. Rebound grabbed by Hins. Just clears her way out. And a three-pointer by Frederick is no good. And Thiel, after all that, will grab the loose change. Pilgrim thought about going coast to coast. Somehow gets the field. Turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound grabbed by Fallingstead. And both teams have gone ice cold in the last four minutes. John drives through and is fouled. Yeah, again, we've been stuck at, at 49. No, I thought we'd get past this 50-point mark early in this, the way we started out the first half. Uh, both teams really struggling, and you wonder if it's that thought of getting to the section final. All of a sudden, shots get a little bit shorter. Your arms lock up a little bit. You're, you don't bend. And uh, again, get back to your shots. Frederick for three out the back iron. John, the rebound tied up by Grismer. Held ball will be the call. Possession arrow to the Yellow Jackets. Nice job there by Grismer creating a possession for the Yellow Jackets. I thought it was going to be all Trojan basketball there, but Grismer, Johnny on the spot and uh, does just a great job. Again, a little bit uh, just token pressure here by the Trojans. I thought maybe they were going to come pick up full court. Anderson. Grismer, wide open look for three. It's good. Cora Grismer with 10 after that three. And the Yellow Jackets have stretched it to eight. Gray with it now. Back to John. John inside. Kick back out of three on its way. That's off mark and Razor the rebound. And the outside shot's just not there right now for Barnesville. Five twenty-two to go in this one. Jackets inside. Thiel tapped out of bounds. It'll be Barnesville basketball. Again, we talk about passes, Jason, and angles. And again, take a couple dribbles down. Let Willow seal. If she doesn't have it, now you rotate it around. I think if you can get them rotating, uh, that's when Willow's been at her best. Is you got to move that ball back and forth or side to side and able to get an open look underneath there because they're just collapsing so much. Gray, three, no good. Gets her own rebound. Back up top. Now comes the John. Grismer out on her. Cross court for Gray. She leaps up and catches it with Anderson on her. The L Jackets in that zone. Now to Falling Set. Falling Set works her way but loses the ball. Turnaround jumper, no. Anderson spikes the rebound. Mickelson leaps and grabs it. And now Razor up ahead to Grismer. A corner three, it's good. Perhaps the dagger for Cora Grismer as she hits the corner three and the Jackets lead by 11. Timeout called by the Trojans with 4.32 to go. And that was just a good side fast break by the Yellow Jackets and Grismer has had some open looks, has caught fire, uh, doing a really nice job of, of not thinking, just shooting. Well, Key is also in transition. That's a shooter spotting up and finding a shot and getting that open look and a nice job of getting her the basketball. Grismer has hit a pair of three-pointers in the second half, now has 13 points, and the Yellow Jackets lead this one by 11. Right, we talked about who might be that person, and it's been Grismer so far here uh, in this last of the second half. Four minutes and 32 seconds remaining. Trojans have just been ice cold, Jason, and I, I don't know... I think you got to start going back, going to the basket. They're such a good dribble drive team. I think you got to go and then get your, your kick off of that, get your three point shooters in line. But you got to get something going to the basket because the three point shooters, just the, the shots, excuse me, are just not falling right now. 432 to go, an 11 point game. Plenty of time for the Trojans to get back. Huge shots there by Grismer on that one. Yeah, mini six-point run by her right there. And again, takes a you know, five-point lead to an 11-point lead. And, uh, man, it, it, it sure probably makes Coach Super feel a little better seeing 11 on the board. But we've seen this multiple times where the uh, Trojans have been down, been down by 12 or 13. And then all of a sudden you look and they're down by one again. Well, you just turn around and there it is. Hins. 
Bucket's going to get called for three seconds in the lane. You talked about it ad nauseum, I'm going to say it, is that it's wide open. She turns around, and the Haft, excuse me, and that's that jumper. Yeah, you just got to be confident in shooting that right now. Uh, either that or take one dribble and attack and, and hope somebody pulls up. And Thiel inside. Nice ball movement by the Yellow Jackets. Thiel puts that one in, and it's now a 13-point Yellow Jacket lead. Kind of sense the uh, weight of the world coming off the Yellow Jackets right here, Jason. Is now everything's starting to go their way, and uh, you can just see them pick up, and here comes full-court pressure by the Trojans. Mickelson inside Thiel. Thiel to finish. The connection that Riley Mickelson and Willow Thiel have has been outstanding throughout the years with a nice answer by Abby John. Yeah, and I'll be really honest, that's not a real good angle for an entry pass by Mickelson, but somehow she finds every time. And Mickelson now goes up and in. She's got five. And the Yellow Jackets by 15. Now John with it. Knife's through, floater, off the glass, good. 13 point Yellow Jacket lead after the basket by John. Grisner breaks the pressure, gets it to Anderson, now to Mickelson. Again, the danger if you press like that, Jason, is there's gonna be open layups and open looks as the, as the floor is wide open. And Cora Grisner takes advantage, drives, finishes, and the Yellow Jackets Make it 63-48, and they will take a timeout with 2.56 to go. Yellow Jackets sensing a return to the section championship. Well, one of the things that we haven't talked about is the size of the floor. A college floor is bigger than your normal high school floor, so when uh, the Trojans were forced now to extend their defense, there's a lot more open space to this, and the yellow... I'm not uh, not taking anything away from the yellow. You still got to make the plays, and they are right now. And I think part of that is they're looking up the floor with the pass instead of trying to dribble through this. And everybody knows that you can pass a lot faster than you can dribble. And they're just beating uh, they're just beating the Trojans back down the floor, and they're getting easier looks. And and hats off to the Yellow Jackets and the coaching staff for uh, a good plan on how to break this pressure. 2.56 to go, Yellow Jackets lead, 63-48. Willow Thiel with 31, Cora Grismer with 15, but Cora's eight in the second half have been huge to stretch this lead out. Yeah, she's been dynamic, and, and it's been in multiple ways. It's also been on the defensive end, so think about this for a second, Jason. She switches off to guard Abby John, which you would think would take away from Cora's offense. It hasn't. It's made her more dynamic, and I don't know if she feels like she's more in the flow of the game or what it is, but since she switched off to guard Abby John, uh, Cora's really had a nice half. Trojans will Milk this as much as they possibly can as they roll it up to John to the far side now for Frederick into the lane. And now goes to John. John off the glass. Good for two for Abby You know, John. I'm wondering, you hate to second guess, but as I'm sitting up here, what if you put John at that inside position? Now all of a sudden you either got to collapse on her or she's going to really turn around and make something happen or, or find their open teammate. It might be a switch that you could make. I don't know. It's kind of late in the game. But put her in that free throw line. Field down low off the glass. Good for two more. Field with 33. The Jackets lead by 15. Cross court. It goes for Frederick. And it's stolen away. Riley Mickelson just comes in. Taps that free in the Yellow Jackets with the turnover. And they could sense it with two minutes to go. Yeah, you have to make a quicker decision there. If you're the Trojans, you can't stand and hold the basketball because you have outside wings coming back into the that zone defense that are going to converge on you. You gotta you either got to put the ball up, make the shot, put it on the floor, or pass it. And a foul away from the basketball, an offensive foul. It's on Riley Mickelson. 
as the Yellow Jackets were working the clock with 1.45 to go. And you're starting to see some substitutions for the Trojans. As Ava Falling said, Sophie Frederick will exit and a nice round of applause from their fans here. With 1.45 to go, John will bring it up court. Gray with it. Swatted away by Thiel. And the Yellow Jackets are ready to put their name with ink into the section championship. Yeah, and the back-to-back years, and, and again, another good game coming up here, I believe, and, and uh, I think it's going to be, whatever it is, going to be a dynamic final. Nicholson the steal. Pelican Rapids taking on Holly in the game after this one. You can find that one on your live event.com. Inside it goes, tapped out of bounds. They'll stay with the Yellow Jackets with 1.24 to go. So lots of basketball action. Boys tournament starting up tomorrow night. Uh, Jason, and then on to the finals for the girls on Friday. Back to the boys on Saturday. March Madness at its greatest. And Willow Thiel exits and gets a nice round of applause for her effort. Nicholson will drive, knife through, and travel. Just putting the finishing touches on this one. Head coach E.J. Super in the Yellow Jackets. Outstanding game plan and effort tonight again. Will Thiel showing why she's one of the more dynamic players and the, perhaps the best, if not the best player in the section tonight again. Jumper there short. John will launch a three. That one's good for Abby John. She's got 24. Willow Thiel in the first game, 41 tonight. 31, so that's 72 in two playoff games for Willow Thiel. And the Yellow Jackets are going to just move the ball around and work the clock and stamp their name into the Section 82A championship where they'll take on either Pelican Rapids or Holly on Friday night. Right back here at Concordia's Mickelson drives. This is the shot, but Diggins no. Rebound grabbed by Lindsay Rotz. And back from the Trojans. Near side, three-pointer from Gray. That's no good. Diggins, the rebound. They just got across half court. Grismer does that, and the Yellow Jackets are moving on for the 65-53 victory over the Barnesville Trojans. Yeah, I think it's one of those games, Jason. I just try to take a moment there just to kind of take it all in. And I think if you're the Yellow Jackets, uh, you feel really good about some of the things you did. I almost on the point I looked, it was a 12-point game, and, and it doesn't seem like it was a 12-point game because the Yellow Jackets, I thought, played really well at times. And I, I thought the Barnesville Trojans did a lot of great things. I think they struggled shooting the basketball tonight. And that's ultimately always going to get you when it comes to, uh, to playoff basketball is we talked about it early who we thought whoever shot the best tonight uh, it sounds kind of uh, very elementary but again you can win the game in multiple ways but the Yellow Jackets just shot the bat ball better and it was a little run by uh, Cora Grismer I thought that really elevated the Yellow Jackets and kind of spread that lead for the last time and uh, the Yellow Jackets just took control of it. And it, it, if you're Barnesville, there's so many things you can look at. I think they got a lot of the things they wanted out of their offense. Maybe could have switched a couple things up just to try to get a little bit more movement out of that zone. Uh, but again, I think at the end of the night, we can, we can battle back and forth and we can talk about this and we can talk about that. It comes down to shooting percentage. And... and for whatever reason tonight, it wasn't the night for the Trojans. They just they just couldn't find the bottom of the basket. And uh, I think frustration set in at times. And you just don't play well when you're frustrated. An outstanding night for the Yellow Jackets leading the way again. Willow Thiel actually with 33 points. So that is 
74 in two games for Willow Field. She has 33 to lead the way. Cora Grismer with 15. Riley Mickelson and Kai Anderson with five each. Four on the board for Kennedy Pilgrim and three for Greta Razor. On the other side, Abby John finishes the night with 24 points. An outstanding player, fun to watch, but you got a tip of the cap to Kennedy Pilgrim and the defense in that first half that she played on Abby John. Yeah, and I think equally as well, you can tip your cap to Cora Grismer in the second half when Pilgrim uh, got into foul trouble, and it was just one of those nights. I, I think the Yellow Jackets did a great job defending her. The shots just weren't foul falling and and she had shots that I think she normally takes they just didn't they just didn't go and uh, you just have those nights and, and I wish I was that type of player that I had 24 on maybe a night you don't think you played your best but again the Yellow Jackets now you you don't take a lot of time to celebrate you got a couple days of practice you're going to probably watch this game tonight to find out who you're going to play come up with a game plan you got a couple days to put in and execute and you got to be right back here on Saturday uh, to try to get this figured out and, and stamp your ticket to the state tournament again the Yellow Jackets improved to 25 and 3 Barnesville ends the season with 18 and a record of 18 and 11 and for Barnesville a senior class that gave a lot to the Trojan program they'll be moving on and whatever they Plan on doing, but a great effort and a great run for the Trojans throughout the season. Right, not a not a senior dominated team, but also some really key components to uh, the Trojans. And and again, it doesn't matter if it's the first round, Jason, the second round, the third round. It doesn't matter if it's at state when you're a senior and that final buzzer goes off. Even if you win, you realize years and years of basketball in the driveway, years and years of being at open gyms, going to scrimmages and, and going to summer basketball, all kind of wrap up to an, an, an end. And, and again, uh, hats off to the Barnesville Trojans on a great season. And again, the old adage, it's tough to beat a team three times, comes back into play. And uh, I, I just, I, I just, I, your heart falls out for the Trojans because they battled so well during the regular season but again uh, you got to tip your cap to the Yellow Jackets tonight as, as they, they just played really really good basketball the Yellow Jackets are moving on Friday night against either Pelican Rapids or the Holly Nuggets if you want to find out live stream information visit permschools.org click on activity stream we'll have that information out for you on that site again permschools.org click on activity stream we'll let you know for that on friday night and keep you alert also to our social medias we'd like to thank the barnesville boosters as well as the yellow jacket backcourt club for their support to tonight's broadcast I'd like to thank the administrations of both school as well as lance rock i'm jason girl we'll see you tomorrow night yellow jacket boys basketball taking on thief river falls from the hive on the Yellow Jacket Activities Network. We thank you for tuning in. Have a good night and drive home safely.